In the golden age of Greek philosophy, a man named Zeno stood before a crowd of skeptics, ready to shake the very foundations of reality. They say motion is real, that Achilles can outrun a tortoise, that an arrow in flight moves through the air. But what if I told you, motion itself is an illusion. The greatest warrior of Greece can never catch a simple tortoise, that a runner can never reach their goal, that an arrow frozen in time never truly moves. These are not mere riddles, they are truths. And if you cannot answer them, then everything you believe about motion is wrong. Achilles, the mightiest warrior of Greece, can run faster than any man alive, and yet, according to Zeno, he will never outrun a simple tortoise. The rules are simple. Achilles gives the tortoise a head start. Once it begins moving, he will chase after it. Sounds fair, doesn't it? The race begins. But in that time, the tortoise has moved forward. So he runs again, reaching the tortoise's new position. But by the time he gets there, the tortoise has moved forward once more. Again and again. And again, Achilles runs, but the tortoise always moves ahead. And if this pattern continues, Achilles will never catch the tortoise. When Zeno first proposed this paradox, it wasn't just ordinary people who were baffled. It was the greatest minds of the time. If Achilles is faster, shouldn't he obviously win? Where is the flaw in Zeno's logic? The problem is, Achilles is trapped in an infinite loop. Each time Achilles moves forward, the remaining distance is divided into an infinite number of steps. Zeno forces us to consider infinity in a way the Greeks had never fully grasped. But here's the key. Even though the sequence is infinite, the sum is finite. Achilles does catch the tortoise because the infinite steps converge to a limit. The Greeks didn't yet have calculus, but today we can prove mathematically that Achilles overtakes the tortoise in a finite amount of time. And yet, if motion is real, why does this paradox exist at all? You might think the problem lies in the way Achilles chases the tortoise. But what if the issue isn't the chase, but the journey itself? Imagine you're on a journey. You have a destination. You are ready to take your first step. But before you reach your goal, first you must reach the halfway point. And before you reach that point, you must reach half of that distance. And before you reach that point, you must reach half of that. And so the question is, if every step requires another step before it, how do you ever take the first one? Zeno's paradox of the dichotomy shattered the way ancient Greeks thought about movement. If every journey is made up of infinite steps, then how does anything ever move at all? How do we escape an infinite sequence? And more importantly, if motion is real, why don't we feel this paradox in our daily lives? To understand the answer, we must look not at the journey, but at the mathematics that governs it. Like Achilles chasing the tortoise, we are again dealing with an infinite sequence, an infinite number of steps. But here's the trick, just like before, this sequence has a limit. Infinity exists, but it can be contained. The paradox is resolved. The journey can begin because the sum of infinite steps is still a finite distance. So we can move forward, but what about a moment where there is no movement at all? An arrow, once fired, moves swiftly through the air. Or does it? What if I told you that at every single instant the arrow is not moving at all? In any given moment, any single frame in time, the arrow is completely still. If the arrow is frozen at each instant, how does it ever move? Zeno argued that time itself is made up of individual, distinct moments. And if time is broken into separate, motionless instants, then motion is just an illusion. The Greeks had no tools to mathematically resolve this paradox. To them, Zeno's argument was unsettling and disturbingly convincing. And if Zeno was right, are we really moving at all? Today, 
We know something Zeno didn't. We don't think of motion as a series of frozen moments, but as a continuous process. What Zeno was missing was the concept of instantaneous velocity. A snapshot of an arrow at rest tells us nothing. But the rate at which its position changes over time, that is what defines motion. Motion is not an illusion. It's the result of an ever-changing position, a concept Zeno never had the tools to fully grasp. What if motion depended not just on speed, but on who was watching? In ancient Greece, stadium races were a spectacle. Speed and endurance pushed to their limits. But Zeno saw something others didn't. He saw a paradox hiding in plain sight. If one group moves to the right and the other to the left, what happens when they pass each other? In the time it takes the middle group to move just one step, the runners moving in opposite directions have passed twice as many of each other. How can someone move at the same speed and yet cover twice the distance? This is the stadium paradox. Zeno believed he had just exposed a fundamental flaw in how we perceive motion. If two runners moving at the same speed appear to be passing each other twice as fast, then something must be wrong with our understanding of time and space. But was this paradox truly about speed? Or was it about how we measure motion itself? What if the problem wasn't motion, but relativity? Zeno's paradox wasn't just a trick of logic. It was an early hint at something deeper something modern physics would later explore. The mistake? Zeno was looking at motion from the wrong frame of reference. To a runner in Group A, the runners in Group B seem to be moving twice as fast. But from an observer on the sidelines, both groups are moving at the same speed, just in opposite directions. Motion is not absolute. It depends on who is watching. Zeno had unknowingly stumbled upon an idea that modern physics would later formalize, relative motion. His paradox may not have stopped the race, but it forced us to rethink the very nature of movement. Zeno's paradoxes didn't break reality, but they did challenge the limits of human understanding. But if motion can be resolved with mathematics, what about time itself? What Zeno presented to the world were not just paradoxes, but puzzles that would transcend his time. Problems that would remain unresolved for centuries, sparking debates and thoughts across generations. Though Zeno himself could not solve his paradoxes, his questions laid the foundation for some of the greatest intellectual breakthroughs in history. From Newton's laws to Einstein's theory of relativity, Zeno's paradoxes continue to challenge our understanding of time, motion, and the very fabric of reality. Today, we grapple with concepts of time and motion in ways Zeno never imagined. Quantum mechanics and relativity have given us insights that resolve many of the paradoxes he proposed. We now know that motion, time and space are interwoven, influenced by our perspective. Zeno's paradoxes, while ancient in their origins, foretold the nature of reality we are still exploring today. What Zeno presented, whether knowingly or unknowingly, was a bridge to the future, a puzzle that compelled humanity to evolve its understanding of the universe. Time, motion, and the paradoxes that bind them. Perhaps the real answer lies not in solving them, but in continuing to explore. For in every question, there is discovery.